Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Salas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. And this one says that why the Jews refuse to recognize Prophet Muhammad as their prophet. So we are going to hear their own um, reasons to why they do so. So if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's thought belief or opinion this is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's get out to this video and check this out it's common for parents to love their children more than the children of their neighbors. This is normal and understandable. However, most parents can recognize that some of their neighbors as children may have better qualities in terms of character, personality or talents compared to their children, sometimes even in many aspects. Still, parents generally have a stronger love for their children. A similar preference can be seen among religious believers. In every religious community, people tend to think that their prophet, holy book, saints and religious traditions are the most true and excellent. This natural feeling, though understandable, can sometimes lead to an unjustified sense of superiority. It can result in hurtful words and even physical conflicts between believers of different religions. Factors influencing Jewish people not to follow Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. One reason was the troublesome state of traditional tribal politics and violence in Medina, which led to conflicts between different tribes, including both Jewish and Arab tribes. This is something that most Muslims are aware of. Another reason was the fear among Jews that after Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him's death, many of the former pagan followers might start worshipping him as a deity, similar to what happened after the death of Prophet Jesus. This eventually led to the persecution of Jews who refused to worship Jesus as the Son of God by the followers of Jesus a few generations later. The Jewish community wanted to avoid a similar situation. The third reason was the widespread belief among Jews that the era of prophecy had ended a long time ago. They didn't believe that any new prophets would arise. Encounter with a Jewish neighbor and the unbelief of the prophet, peace be upon him. It's widely known among Muslims that during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Jews and Christians were aware of his true status as a prophet, but chose to keep it a secret. While many have discussed the prophecies mentioned in the holy books of these faiths, few have talked about the actual attitudes of Jews and Christians towards the Prophet, peace be upon him, at that time. These attitudes revealed their lack of sincerity on one hand, and highlighted the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's sincerity and truthfulness on the other. Salama ibn Salama al-Ansari shares his experience as a young boy living next to a Jewish neighbor. This neighbor used to have discussions with Salama and others about topics such as resurrection, judgment day, hell and paradise. Salama being the youngest was present among some people who didn't believe in resurrection. They questioned whether people could come back to life and be rewarded based on their actions. The Jewish neighbor accused them that this would indeed happen. He pointed towards a direction between Mecca and Yemen and indicated that a prophet would soon be sent. Salama mentions that not long after, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent and the Jewish neighbor was still alive among them. While Salama and others believed in the prophet, peace be upon him, the Jewish neighbor, out of envy and bitterness, refused to believe, even though he had previously informed them about him. Salama and others confronted him, reminding him of what he had said, but he denied the Prophet peace be upon him's authenticity, stating that he was not the expected Prophet they were anticipating. What does Quran say about the Jews? Some Jewish people used to pray for victory and mention the name of Muhammad, even though many of them believed in him as a Prophet. However, they had a condition that the Prophet should come from their community, and because Muhammad was not from their people, they refused to accept him as a Prophet. The Holy Quran addresses this behavior by mentioning that when a book from Allah came to them, confirming what was written in their scriptures, they chose not to believe it. This is even though they had previously prayed to Allah for the coming of Muhammad to help them defeat their enemies. 
As a consequence, Quran pronounces a curse upon those who disbelieve. Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-Baqarah, They, Jews and Christians, say, Our hearts are the wrappings which preserve Allah's word. We need no more. Nay, Allah's curse is on them for their blasphemy. Little is it they believe. Allah Almighty explains in Surah Al-Imran, the thing happened to the Jews that turned away from the straight path even though the Book of Allah was given to them. Have you not noticed those Jews who have been given a portion of the Book? Whenever they learned, men are summoned to the Book of Allah to judge the differences between them, a party of them turns away in aversion. This is because they say, the fire of hell shall not touch us except for a limited number of days. The false beliefs which they have forged have deluded them in their faith. What Allah did do to the Jews when they refuse him and his prophet, peace be upon him? You will see many of them befriending those who disbelieve. Certainly evil is that which their souls have sent before for them, that Allah become displeased with them and in chastisement shall they abide. And had they believed in Allah and the Prophet peace be upon him and what was revealed to him, they would not have taken them for friends, but most of them are transgressors. Certainly you will find the most violent of people in enmity for those who believe to be the Jews. And as for those who disbelieve and reject our communications, these are the companions of the flame. Should Muslims fight against these Jews who refuse Holy Prophet, peace be upon him? Islam, as described by the questioner, is a religion that promotes mercy and peace. Unlike what has happened in the past and sometimes still occurs, Islam does not expel or harm Jews and Christians when they are living in Muslim lands. There is a treaty between them and the Islamic State that outlines the rights and responsibilities of both parties. As long as they abide by these conditions, they have the right to live peacefully and securely. Islam protects non-Muslims, known as Ahl Adhima, who live in Muslim lands as long as they follow the rules of the residents. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Whoever kills a Mu'ahid, non-Muslim living under Muslim rule, will not smell the fragrance of paradise, even though its fragrance may be detected from a distance of 40 years. He further said, Whoever wrongs a Mu'ahid detracts from his right, burdens him with more work than he can do or takes something from him without his consent, I will plead for him, the Mu'ahid or I will be the opponent of the Muslim who wronged him on the day of resurrection. In conclusion, when it comes to faith and family heritage, there are many different viewpoints and beliefs. The Jewish community wanted a prophet to come from the descendants of Ishaq and eagerly awaited divine guidance. This surprised them and challenged what they thought they knew. But this chosen person became a shining example of goodness and truth even in a world filled with sinners and darkness. It's important to understand that Islam teaches kindness, peace and living together peacefully. Muslims are instructed to protect and respect the rights of Jews and Christians who live in Muslim lands. This is written in treaties and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Islam rejects causing harm and encourages fairness for everyone, stressing the importance of treating non-Muslims with respect. Let's make an effort to understand, to talk and show compassion to people of different faiths, embracing the true essence of Islam's teaching. Keep following us if you want more content related to Islam and its teachings. Hmm. That's a very interesting um, video, at least for some of us have learned the reasons why um, the Jews does not accept um, Prophet um, Muhammad as a prophet of God. And then let me not just say only the Jews, but then the reasons why Christians don't support or do not take um, Prophet Muhammad as the prophet of um, God, or should I say they don't recognize him as a prophet of God. Of course, this video has able to make us to understand that some of them are based on political reasons, and then some could be because of um, how they are being um, taught, and that that's the reason why they do not um, accept him and not that because of he do not either fulfill the prophecy in the religious um, scriptures but 
in as much as they are fully aware of it but then they wanted the prophets to come in the lineage of um, Isaac that is um, Isaac but then one thing I want to add up is if you look at Jesus Christ's history and then how he was giving birth of course the Jews as of that time they thought that Jesus is going to come from a very wealthy family and following in a sense the prophecy but then at the end of the day what happened that was somebody that was actually giving birth in a manger right somebody you understand that did not experience the life of what luxury and all those things right that is what you understand they are expecting somebody you understand that lives in a sense in the royal house and all those things that's how do you think in the king in a sense will come but at the end of the day god in his own way do it in his own way and not to man's um, understanding that is why how or where man wisdom in a sense ends maybe probably that is where the wisdom of god start but then i think it does not still equate to that because man wisdom there's no way it can actually be equate to that of um god so sometimes i think people used to forget that isaac and ishmael are children of abraham and god promised in a sense his blessings to the children of abraham so the question is why who are you to decide whether the prophecy should be fulfilled in isaac or should be fulfilled in ishmael who are you that is why it is god he can make anything to happen and it's not in our responsibility for us to go and challenge and says that oh look it has to be from this person or it has to be from the other person no god knows better and he has reasons to why he do what he do so there is no need of us to keep cautioning things that we cannot control things that we have no understanding in a sense about that's why i'm saying that let's continue to seek for god wisdom to be able to help us explain in a sense some certain things and i could tell you that because of all these things so many souls has been taken away just because of all these things things that you understand well to whether they are true or they are not true but then the most important thing is for us to be connected to our maker be connected to our creator to be able to like listen to him and do what he has asked us to do at the end of the day whether you believe in the bible or believe in the quran all those things are there as guidance they are not there because they are like a ticket that will take you to heaven so why don't you just follow the ticket and follow the principles instead of wanting to say that oh your ticket is not right my ticket is right my like at the end of the day where would that one take you to you can only just lead you to argument right so why don't you believe in a sense in the principle of god believe in him believe in his word if you feel this quran is the right word follow the quran and if you believe it's, it's the bible follow the teachings of god in the bible follow all the commandments at least you understand it can be able to lead you somewhere but having this unnecessary argument to says that Quran is only the word of God or Bible is the only the word of God is unnecessary the most important thing is these things are like a guide okay both the Quran or the Bible they are all guidance those books in a sense they don't even use these books in, in heaven these things are only given here on earth so they are going to expire here on this very earth so just believe in a sense in the teachings so that it can be able to take you to the next step simple as ABC believing in all these unnecessary argument it does not mean anything and that's why as for me i don't care anyhow in a sense people want to say it is and that is their problem because even if i die today i go to heaven or whatever god is going to use to judge me it will be between me and god so if i know a particular verse in the quran that i know that i can be able to use to give you an explanation for you to understand i will use it if you like say you are an apostle this or if you like says that you are what some says you are a fake pastor why would you say that and all those that is your problem i have explained to you if you like you understand if you like you don't understand that is your problem when you die you're going to face your maker and that's what you understand i stand for i know that a lot of you have told an opinion i want to drop it at the comment section and god is going to bless you as you do so don't also forget to comment where you are watching me from and God will richly bless you. So this is the end of my video. If you like my reaction, you should like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it in the comment section. And I'm going to check it out. So guys, you remain blessed. And i see you in my next video. Bye-bye.